Good evening, dear viewers. I warmly welcome you all to the fifth webinar of the webinar series organized by the Aura Media, along with the Student Affairs Division and the Sports Committee of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Kalania. Today's topic is Better Professionals for a Better Society, where we will be talking about the importance of moral values in a professional's career. And joining me today is the man, the myth, and the legend, a retired cricketer who was a former captain and a member of the 1996 Cricket World Cup winning team, a widely renowned batsman and fielder, a former elite panel match referee, an expert cricket commentator, and is now currently involved in various philanthropic activities across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure, let me warmly welcome our guest speaker tonight, Mr. Roshan Mahanama. How are you doing, sir, tonight? Uh, Mali, thank you very much for that kind introduction. I'm keeping well, and I'm looking forward to this session with great interest. Before I go any further, I must thank um, Professor Janaki Hewawisenti for giving me an opportunity to address the, the young professionals who are uh, into a very noble profession through her. I think, if my memory recalls, Correct, Dr. Rohita was in touch with me. He, he coordinated and uh, I think subsequently passed uh, it over to you and the, uh, and the other organizers of, of the event. So uh, I'm looking forward to the session with great interest. We are very honored to have you today and we are also looking forward to having this wonderful interview with you today. And in our calls prior to this meeting, it was quite evident that you had an extremely busy week traveling around Sri Lanka. So to begin this interview, I would first love to hear from you as to why you decided to take this interview amidst your hectic schedule and address the undergraduate here with us tonight. Uh, there were various reasons. One, like I mentioned before, I was not in a position to say no to Professor Janaki Heva Vicente. And also I feel that the youngsters should be encouraged in every possible way. And I'm really happy to be, be part of this interview and part of this session, uh, despite my busy schedule. Uh, I wouldn't have accepted if it uh, didn't come from Professor Janaki Heva Vicente, but uh, I was not in a position to say no to her. Uh, and that's the reason that uh, I decided to be part of this um, interview and, and uh, tonight's uh, session. Thanks. Now, morals are the standard of behaviors in our society, the principles of right and wrong. And it has been a rising complaint that moral values in our community has indeed been in a steep decline. So before we discuss the importance of moral values, I would first like to start with asking you about your journey as a professional cricketer, the moral values you learned during that time, and how it helped you in your career as well. First, let me let me uh, tell the youngsters. I'm sure most of them uh, most of them wouldn't know who I am, what my background was. Uh, I'm talking to a group of academics, professionals. And uh, I'm always um, careful when I advise professionals and academics, but I must tell everyone who's part of this session today, I sacrificed my studies to live my dream. It wasn't an easy journey. Yes, I had my, my challenges uh, when I started playing at a very early stage, even though I was performing, even though I was... Um, uh, excelling in batting and fielding um, for people who follow the game of cricket. Uh, my own schoolmates felt that I was not good enough to represent my school at a very, very uh, young age. Um, I was selected to represent the under-19 uh, school team even before I turned 15. And on the day that I was looking forward to, um, you know, being part of the uh, school under 19 team, I turned up at the grounds and my own schoolmates, my friends felt that I was not good enough and they were, they were hanging white flags, black flags to show that they were mourning. Yes, um, it was a very challenging period. I couldn't go to school, um, but my late father, who was my hero, my mentor said, son, I'll take the fight. You just let your bed do the talking. That's exactly what I did. I was uh, all out to go and prove my critics wrong. I became uh, the first schoolboy cricketer to have won 
the best cricket of the year award back to back in 1983 1984 why i'm saying this is not to promote myself i've lived my life now my only aim is to try and leave a uh, leave a better place for the younger generation and also to tell <clears throat> uh people who are part of this session that there will be challenges but but you have to be strong enough to face those challenges and also to have a never a give up attitude i will throughout the session today i will be talking about some of my own experiences and the challenges that i had to face to achieve my goals i feel that's uh the best rather than talking about the others and it's not only in cricket that i had to face challenges but also in bringing up three three daughters and i think this is the appropriate forum for me to talk about some of those uh challenges also i think uh the most influential people in my life my parents my first coach mr nelson mendis my teachers my brother my wife and those who taught me cricket which became my profession uh are my heroes and my my role models more importantly they coach me uh the art of life and i think it's very very important that we have moral values and we stand uh uh by the principles that we believe in for me uh madi i firmly believe don't i know uh, like i mentioned before i'm talking to uh Uh, a group of young professionals for a moment don't think that i'm saying it because uh, i'm not academic or i'm not educated like i mentioned before i live my dream i wanted to do what i want to do and i achieved and i was part of a team that won a won a, won a world cup and something that i learned subsequently by working for the international cricket council as a match referee was in whatever you do uh, it will be good if you can leave leave a legacy and go and uh, i think in my small way i when i look back i feel that uh, i have achieved but i wanted to achieve um and work really hard in the areas that i um you know worked on even subsequently as a match referee but coming back to what i was trying to tell you i firmly believe that it is not whether someone is educated or not that matters as, as far as i am concerned it is the upbringing that matters and it is very important as far as i am concerned because i feel parents teachers lecturers can impart an education to a child to a youngster or to a young professional but what is important is to inculcate good good values and to encourage um these youngsters encourage everyone to be good human beings at all times i think they should not be compromising on human values at the end of the day what is important is to be Uh, a good human being irrespective of what you have or you will achieve in in life for me i have seen some of the worst acts committed by people who have had a good educational background therefore all you youngsters who are part of this session this evening must keep in mind that you have to always be ethically driven and should always focus on values instead of uh monetary gains thank you sir for walking us through such an inspirational life story and moving on now that we have got an idea of what good morals has helped you a lot in your career i would like to know as to why you think moral values are important especially in professionals for a better society i i, I feel it's it's very important because you need to walk the talk a lot of people like i mentioned before at the outset the group of uh, youngsters who are here are, are are a group who have selected a very noble pro- profession how can you expect the others to do the right thing if you don't do the right thing i think this reminds me of a statement made by uh that great south african leader nelson mandela nelson mandela goes on to say that first be honest with yourself if you are not honest with yourself how can you expect everyone else to be honest how can uh, you expect um others to be 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 genuine for me uh, again i don't know how many of uh, um you all are there in this session uh, madi what could be the numbers uh, 
who who are here present today about a 50 less right okay and i don't know how many of them uh follow sport how many of them follow follow cricket and i would like to tell these uh youngsters that i played in an era where there was no ma- money so money uh was not something that came into the equation what we wanted was to do our best in the profession in the field that we selected irrespective of what was going to 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 follow and when i look back now it's a gamble that has paid off for me but i have no regrets because i gave my best shot uh I played in a era where there was match fixing when I say match fixing for the people who does not understand you can earn money uh, the wrong way some of the great cricketers um were were involved in match fixing and uh, they were even even punished but because of the more moral values because I was ethically driven I was lucky because I was taught always to do the right thing and be focused in what i was supposed to do cricket is a game of uh, you know disciplines that comes together and uh, i always focused on uh, what i had to do to to be performing at the optimum level for me personally i will not compromise on honesty integrity values discipline loyalty friendship i put money last money will always come last if you put money first for fame or power then you will compromise on all the other values that i <clears throat> that i just 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 mentioned and uh, i come from humble background and i never thought that i will be involved in close to 600 international matches but when i look back now working for the uh, games governing body was the greatest thing and it was only sri lanka who had two on the panel i really don't know how i got the job i feel that there's someone above i don't believe in external forces but um uh, uh at the end of the day when i look back i feel that my honesty and integrity was record, recognized by uh, the international cricket council and i feel that's the greatest honor for me and i would like to tell uh these youngsters respect is something that you should earn and not demand i feel if anyone has good qualities and if you are a good human being uh you will definitely earn respect certainly not because you have power or money i have no respect for dishonest people why i say that is i think it's it's important for me to get this message across to the young professionals because seen what has uh been taking place in the country in the right reason past i know everyone has his or hers point of view but quite a lot of people wouldn't look within themselves to see are we doing the right thing and i think uh, everyone should should look within and see am i doing the right uh, right thing we all make mistakes again something comes to my mind that great leader um former pakistan prime minister pakistan cricket team captain imran khan says people who have been successful have failed at certain stages of their lives or careers but they have analyzed corrected and come back stronger so yes we will make mistakes but you need to look within yourself to see whether yes is that something that you want to do if that is what you want to do or if you feel that that's not something that you have um uh, you know, you're not supposed to do then work on it correct yourself and come back s- stronger indeed having professional with good moral values will boost and uplift our society and this brings me to our next question where i would like to hear your opinion and suggestions on what core moral values should be inculcated especially at the undergraduate level and how universities can ensure that they produce socially responsible professionals 
I think it's up to uh, the universities, the uh, the hierarchy to inculcate good good values. I think the people who set standards really need to walk the talk. I feel in life quite a lot of the people does not walk the talk. Some of them talk about the principles, the processes, but we see in most uh, uh, of these organizations, sometimes the hierarchy does not follow uh, those principles and guidelines. How can you expect uh, your subordinates to, to follow? So those guidelines, principles will have to be set in place and in workplaces, uh, those guidelines have to be uh, implemented. You have to treat everyone alike, irrespective of their background, irrespective uh, of where they, where they come from. I'll give you uh, one good example. My second daughter, uh, is also a doctor. She just passed out um, and she's working in the UK. Uh, there were, there were certain, certain rules that they had to follow. Uh, one of the things that I told my daughter was that you're there, uh, she studied at Manipal, Manipal, India. She did a twinning program. And I told her that for her to always think for herself why she's in India, what she wants to achieve in life and stay focused and she should not be violating any of the guidelines or the rules that has been set by that university and one such uh, guideline was these children to be back in uh, in the hostel by midnight and I know when you let loose some of these youngsters get, they go overseas which I have done when I toured for the first time with the Sri Lanka under 19 team I was only 17 plus and, uh, you know, you like to explore certain things. But I told my daughter, yes, you're going there with a purpose. Stay focused. Follow the guidelines. Don't go off track and also get into trouble. And I also told her, being overseas, don't forget that you are an ambassador of your country. Make sure that you come back uh, before midnight if that's the guideline, if that's the rule. And some of her own... Uh, friends did not like uh, the fact that she she took that stance and they made it hard for her i know she was literally crying early stages because uh, you know uh, how it works when you're with a, uh, a younger group if someone does not fall in line uh, line not that she was not a team person she she did not blend with the others but at the same time uh, i was I, I told her that she needs to follow uh, those, those uh, guidelines and they uh, really made her life miserable but i'm not one of those fathers who will go and talk to the deans and so on in india obviously cricket strike a religion if i had gone and spoken to them yes but i told her that like my father told me you have to go through uh, these challenges be strong stay focused and the only way that you can prove your critics wrong is by performing. I can proudly say I feel that she's not bright. I was not good enough, but I worked hard. She, I feel it was, uh, again, is not bright enough. Uh, she's not bright, but she, she worked hard. She batched up in anatomy, batched up in forensic, batched up fourth year. Uh, I think it was purely because of uh, um, those some of those issues that she, she had to face. So what I'm trying to tell these universities is yes, you need to ha have these systems in place and also uh, uh, the superiors need to follow. But at the same time, like, like I mentioned before, you girls and boys look within yourself and see whether you're doing the right thing by the university that has given you an opportunity. Maybe the country again, uh, uh, for you all, I think you all are in the national uh, uni uh, university where, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I was told that all the students are from the Colombo North uh, Medical Faculty. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So uh, you, you all are fortunate enough. Again, uh, a group of uh, very bright students have gone there. So you need to follow those uh, guidelines. And I think in life, um, it can be sport. It can be any field. There's a lot of similarities in sports or connect connections between sport and a, and a professional career. But I feel people cannot compromise on discipline and moral values. Thanks, Stephen.
Now, throughout our conversation, we had talked about inculcating good moral values in our professional career and at the undergraduate levels. But at the same time, when we talk about basic moral values as honesty and respect, I believe sometimes such values should be instilled from childhood. So I would like to hear your thoughts on the role of parents in developing good moral values. And as a parent yourself who has raised three daughters, what advice would you give to parents so they may raise their children with such values, making it easier for them to apply it in their professional careers in the future? Um, like I said at uh, the outset, I think as far as I'm concerned, it's the, it's the upbringing that ma matters. I think the parents play a huge part but by saying that parents are there after a certain age, once you inculcate those values, the expectations uh, from, from your children is to guide them and, and let them go on their journey. I see um, uh, uh, quite a lot of parents uh, in the modern generation. They, they try to take their children on, on, on the journey as well. I think my view is that they need to allow these children to go on their journey. Yes, there will be challenges. There will be uh, uh, issues. And I was one of them. Uh, um, I will encourage my, my children to, uh, to, to face those challenges, face those uh, issues. Because as a parent, you would always feel that your child is the best. And uh, what they don't realize if something happens and if you try to influence, if you try to go and tell somebody, there might be someone else who would be, who would be slightly better than your child. And what you should do is to encourage your uh, child to work, analyze and see what needs he or she needs to, uh, uh, needs to do. And, and as parents, I don't think we should entertain criticism of teachers, lecturers and so on. My view is we should encourage children to work harder and uh, uh, trying to improve uh, themselves from wherever they are. A lot of parents try to compare children, which I feel is not good. Everyone has his or her talent and talent is unique to that particular individual and everyone has a journey. But as parents, I think they should not compare children, but encourage your children to do better or to analyze and go uh, from wherever they are to the, the, the next step. But uh, as parents, if they don't do the right thing, I feel then to inculcate some of those good good values uh, are, are quite, quite dif uh, difficult. If a parent is not disciplined, if a parent does not go on time to work, is not committed to his or her hers task, as children, they see. And I, uh, I, I'm a firm believer it can be as a parent, it can be as an individual for you youngsters as well. You're young enough to work out now to try and walk the talk. You all know what is good and what is not good. Yes, at a very young age, starting from home, uh, then your teachers, your principals, lecturers, whoever would talk about discipline and, uh, and uh, the expectations. And uh, you all for yourself sometimes figure out what is what is what is best, but I think it's it's important um, that everyone focuses on these on these key values and and uh, try to try to uh, work harder. And as parents, again, uh, they should always encourage their children to control only the controllables. Parents are there only to support and guide, and not to take. Uh, their children towards towards their goal. Now, uh, just for example, again, my eldest daughter who hates studies, we never thought that she will um, get through her O-levels, never thought that she'll get through her uh, 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 A-levels. And also, I think when you're picking and choosing a profession, it should it should suit your personality as well. And uh, she got through O-levels, she got through her A-levels, she got a uh, kind of a parts call to do marketing and he said she uh, she said Tata 
you know me i'm not going i'm not the outgoing type i don't think it will fit my personality i said you choose whatever you like but i have told my three daughters that they have to be educated if they don't want to study i said that doesn't you know for me as far as i'm concerned it doesn't matter but they have to be they have to be good at something they need to uh, find a profession because i said don't look at your mother and think that life is going to be uh, easy if things doesn't work you should be able to stand on your own feet so she decided to do do sima and i'm just telling you this story is is to figure out because i feel it's it's very important that uh, um, sometimes the lecturers uh, your teachers will try to push you in good faith but at the same time you also should know whether you can handle and what you can handle and when my daughter came and said my lecturers want me to do three subjects at a time four subjects at a time i said they are telling you in good faith you do whatever you can so as parents as individuals you need to figure out what you can handle that's why i said every individual uh is unique talented but uh, people can handle things in in different ways and she got through got through her exams she wanted to get married my only request was for her to finish off what she started uh, she got pregnant she fell uh, topsima there was pandemonium at home to see why she has to continue with her studies because she said she was never going to go into work but i'm not one of those nagging parents fathers and my only request was was for her to finish off what she started and then she thought after the baby was born she'll give one final shot to see whether she can get through the exams and she said that's the last time got the mother and the younger sister to to a sister she did the top sima she became sri lanka's number 1 world number 5 i'm not again talking about what she's achieved and there was a lifelong lesson i think that she learned i said this is something that you can pass on to your children you will not get anything if you don't work uh, hard and she always says that the the sisters were brainier but she wanted results without putting in effort but why i said that was if she started to do three four subjects at at a given time she wouldn't have gone that far she would have got fed up so you all also need to have work life balance and that's something that each individual should develop and the parents i think plays a key role to encourage their children to figure out what they can handle and what they can't handle and encourage children to control only the controllables thank you sir now one of the many complaints which several professionals these days is that they face a lot of stress in their career and most of this stress arises from the conflict they face by trying to balance their work life and their family life and this is something you touched on and i would like to hear more on as you as you're a professional yourself how do you think a person should be able to maintain those two lives together and live a balanced life i think madhi it's very very important for young professionals to have a work life balance um my profession was such that um even as a player we got married young uh, my wife and myself discuss she she was um, uh, you know great to to make the sacrifice of not pursuing her her studies purely because uh, we, we had a young family she had to focus on the children because i was on the move and for us at the end of the day it was about the family and for us to be 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 together then subsequently i worked for the international cricket council to be precise i was uh, out of the country for 206 207 days and whenever i was in the country i made sure it comes back to what i mentioned earlier on we put everything in uh, in terms of material materialistic values the cars the houses the money and so on and i decided and i i i decided that uh, i i decided that uh, no yes i have two small businesses but those businesses one handled by my brother in law the other one handled by my 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 son in law now but even at the time when i when i was in the country i was always back home at 2 o'clock to sit with the family to have a meal together and after after that meal spend time with the family and looked into the 
affairs of the family everyone might not be able to do that but work uh, family life balance is key i think what we do is sometimes we uh, as parents adults go out of our way to give everything to our children i don't think that's the responsibility of adults or parents the responsibility is a to give a good upbringing b uh, education and make sure that they uh, are ready to go on the journey of life but if you try to give uh, a house to each child a car to each child then you will definitely neglect your 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 family and uh, for me it's not only your family you need to look after yourself as well uh, i have been able to pass that on to my three daughters most of them i think would be pretty much similar to the ages of uh, uh of the girls and boys who are part of this session today and they uh, find time to go and do a workout mabi now uh, i have a target for for a year uh, when i say i'm busy my fitness workouts are factored into my schedule covid year was the best year i did 240 days of workouts last year 210 this year my aim is to do 200 days so i find time to do so it's about having that work life balance and i would like to tell these young doctors for me i will not um uh, and i will not encourage my 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 daughters to do that as well i've got a daughter in the uk now she came down to uh work here obviously you girls and my, uh, boys might know uh, the mindset of uh, uh, some of the people who are in in your profession towards um, foreign graduates so she came down she was finding it difficult to do the erpm uh, because uh, they were not conducting erpm at the time then uh, they made it hard again for her went to batik clo uh, people were not all that supportive she went to the uk got a job did plab got a job and she's working there now but she became sri lanka's number 2 in the erpm as well and why why i'm trying to get this across is not about the achievements about the the uh, the the some of these uh, challenges and also i have told them all of them follow sport they have other interests so i see lot of professionals in this country they work 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 that's that's all they neglect their families it's all about racking money or having more 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 benefits look at the profession um uh, the, the doctors in this country we go and see doctors sometimes at 10 10 30 at night day in day out they do that yes it can be a service uh, uh from their point of view but i feel sometimes humanly it's not possible uh to work those long hours i think we need to we need to be disciplined we need to be mindful of what we can handle we don't see in uh something like this in certain other 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 countries and one other thing that i request from this group of youngsters is yes this is a blessed country in that sense we've got a free education uh we've got a lot of a uh, lot of lot of benefits but i know for you doctors sometimes for post grad they support they they send you uh overseas uh uh for training but some of them they leave even without paying the bond i don't think that's right but as i said you have to be ethically driven i know when i go into uh, hospitals talk to people i think we need to get this message across that's why mahadi i felt that it was important for me to talk on these values i uh, a friend of mine two weeks ago told me not to mention a particular doctor that i have a insurance policy it's purely because his payments level changes it cannot be so you have to be ethically driven i know you ask me certain questions you know i'm covering some of those points uh, under under this as well so you have to be ethically driven i see some of the doctors in some of the hospitals they say you know they charge um, you know they charge uh, people differently 
you can't it's not about money it it's about good values it's about being ethically driven it's about doing the right thing forget about everyone else but you all need to start somewhere this generation your generation is very critical for us to do well as a as a country yes we've seen a surge we've seen a, a mindset change now but before you correct others we need to correct ourselves so before we can bring this wonderful enlightening session to a conclusion on a final note how could we how would you sum up all what we had spoken today as a final word of advice to our undergraduates who had come here today as a final word of advice my final word of advice is walk the talk there will be challenges it's not going to be easy throughout your life there will be challenges but stay strong be committed to what you're doing don't look at shortcuts and work hard towards achieving what you want to achieve in life this reminds me of a great statement made by that legendary boxer muhammad ali when he said i hated every minute of training but i said don't quit suffer now live the rest of your life as a champion so yes girls and boys there will be uh, challenges be strong enough but don't compromise on good human values and above all you have to be a good human being thank you very much sir and thank you for coming here today and joining us with us today it was truly an enlightening session and we are very happy that you you were here to guide us in this wonderful way and thank you for all the viewers for showing up here tonight i hope you enjoyed this session and learned a lot from it so mr rosha mahanama was truly inspirational to all of us today and with this we will bring tonight's session to an end i hope all of you have a pleasant evening good night good night all the best to all of you thanks